Is the universe infinite? What shape does it have? Why and how is it expanding? And how in the future might we be able to travel between galaxies? I will try to answer these complex questions in simple and accessible language. Whether Aristotle, Archimedes, or Euclid, none believed in an infinite universe. However, in the 16th century, Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus suggested the infinity of the universe. At the moment, we still don't know everything, but we do know the fact that we can never see the entire universe. The reason for this is the finite speed of light, and the farther a galaxy is, the longer its light takes to reach us. Since the age of the universe is 13.8 billion years, light from some galaxies simply hasn't reached us yet. But at what distance is the most distant observable galaxy from us? It would be logical to assume that since light had 13.8 billion years to reach us, the distance is 13.8 billion light years. However, this is incorrect because we live in a dynamic universe that is expanding. An apt analogy is a beetle running on a stretching rubber band. It would take more time to reach the other end compared to running on a static band. According to modern calculations of the universe's expansion speed, considering its entire history, the most distant galaxy from use is located at a distance of 46.5 billion light years. This is more than three times the distance in a static universe. A sphere with such a radius and an observer in the center is called the particle horizon. Beyond it, we cannot see, even with the largest telescope. But if we can't see anything behind it, it doesn't mean that there's nothing there. Now everyone might wonder, what is beyond the particle horizon? Unfortunately, I cannot surprise you with any astonishing fact. Beyond the horizon are galaxies, stars, and planets similar to those around us. To understand this, let me introduce you to the cosmological principle. The universe has neither a center nor an edge. The center of the universe is everywhere, and the Big Bang happened everywhere. The universe on a large scale is homogeneous and isotropic, meaning that if we take two large chunks of the universe, they will not differ significantly, and no matter where you look, you will see the same thing. Due to the cosmological principle, it seems to us that we are at the center of the expansion, although there is no actual center. Therefore, beyond the particle horizon, there are galaxies similar to those around us. Simply because the speed of light is finite, we cannot see them. If somehow we find ourselves beyond the particle horizon, the nearest galaxies will not move at superluminal speeds, relative to us because the center of the particle horizon will move with us preventing us from seeing our home galaxy, the Milky Way. However, new galaxies, previously inaccessible, will be revealed to us. Okay, we already know how far we can peer into the universe, but what about the geometry of the universe? Can it be closed? And could we, by looking through a telescope, see ourselves from behind? From the general theory of relativity, we know that mass curves space and on enormous scales the mass of the universe can close it upon itself. This can be tested by measuring the average density of the universe. If it equals a critical density, the universe is flat and not curved. If it's greater, there's enough mass to curve it into a sphere. If it's less, the universe takes on a satellite shape. The crucial point is that we have measured the density of the universe, and it is precisely equal to the critical density, which means our universe is flat and infinite. Isn't it astonishing, such a coincidence? However, there is a measurement error of 0.25%, implying a possibility that the universe might be closed. This means that if we embark on a cosmic journey and fly straight without turning, when we return home, similar to a plane flying in any direction on Earth, after covering 40,000 km, it will return to the same point. But more likely, the universe is flat and infinite. Let's return to the expansion of the universe. Due to the expansion, governed by Hubble's law, the farther a galaxy is from us, the faster it is moving away. For instance, a galaxy at a distance of one megaparsec is receding from us at a speed of 70 kilometers per second, while a galaxy at a distance of two megaparsecs is moving away at a speed of 140 kilometers per second and so on. Therefore, is there a point where a galaxy is receding from us faster than the speed of light? But how is this possible? Doesn't the theory of relativity state that nothing can move faster than the speed of light? 
it turns out there is no violation of the special theory of relativity here. In our case, no objects are moving faster than the speed of light. If we choose a coordinate system, the galaxies do not change their coordinates, meaning they are stationary, while the coordinate system itself is expanding. Although I always say that all galaxies are moving away from us, you might argue, aren't we approaching the Andromeda galaxy? You're right, we are approaching Andromeda, and galaxies have their own velocities in addition to the expansion velocity. However, in cosmology, we neglect their peculiar velocities as they are negligible on large scales compared to the expansion velocity of the universe. But what causes the universe to expand? In physics, nothing happens without a reason. The answer to this question is dark energy. Little is known about it, but here is what is currently understood. Firstly, it is uniformly distributed throughout the universe, unlike regular matter and other forms of dark matter. In galaxies and galaxy clusters, there is as much dark energy inside as outside. Secondly, it possesses several peculiar properties that can be understood by analyzing the equations of the theory of relativity and interpreting their solutions. For example, dark energy experiences anti-gravity. Its presence causes the universe to accelerate its expansion. Dark energy seems to repel itself simultaneously accelerating the dispersion of ordinary matter gathered in galaxies. Additionally, dark energy has negative pressure, preventing the stretching of matter. The primary candidate for dark energy is the vacuum. The energy density of the vacuum does not change with the expansion of the universe, corresponding to negative pressure. Another candidate is the hypothetical ultra-weak field called quintessence, Hopes for clarifying the nature of dark energy are primarily tied to new astronomical observations. Progress in this direction will undoubtedly bring radically new knowledge to humanity, because in any case, dark energy must represent an entirely unusual substance, vastly different from anything physics has dealt with so far. Dark energy is currently considered one of the main components of the energy balance of the universe, constituting approximately 68% of all energy matter in it together with dark matter about 27% and regular matter approximately 5%, dark energy plays a crucial role in the evolution and current expansion of the universe. On one hand, it may seem unfortunate that we know so little about such a significant part of our universe. On the other hand, science is rapidly advancing, and humanity has made incredible progress in the last 100 years. There are significant prospects for future research into dark energy. As we know, the speed of a spacecraft is limited by the speed of light, and engineers have no concept of how to achieve it because the fastest spacecraft has reached only 6% of the speed of light. Even at the speed of light, it would take billions of years to reach neighboring galaxies. However, if a way to create a bubble using dark energy is found, it might assist in intergalactic travel. When discussing a bubble in the context of intergalactic travel, the idea is usually about creating a spatial bubble or region where control over space-time is exercised. This concept is closely related to the concept of Alcubierre's warp drives, proposed by theorist Miguel Alcubierre, and may involve potential use of dark energy. The idea is to create an area of space-time where special conditions are imposed, such as controlled curvature of space or time. This creates a bubble or area where the laws of physics may differ from those observed in the ordinary part of the universe. Dark energy, in this context, could be used to create and sustain such a bubble by providing energy to establish and maintain special conditions inside it. This approach to intergalactic travel currently lacks sufficiently confirmed theoretical foundations and technological possibilities. However, these ideas reflect attempts to look into the future and envision how we might use dark energy in the technology of the future. If you want to help a young astrophysical channel, then subscribe, hit the notification bell and give it a thumbs up.